The laptop that you're looking at is very similar to Dell Vastro 5620 and Dell Inspiron 5620 itself. There was already a very much confusion between buying these two laptops. Now yet there is another laptop with the same set of specifications. Yes, we are talking about the Dell Inspiron 3520 which shares a similar specifications with these two models and we are going to find out the key differences between these three laptops. Let me give you a pro tip look out for the performance of these three laptops. We'll be attending every single point that you can see on your screen right now. Let me just get on to the first one and that is the design of this. On the back we have the Dell logo embossed in a premium aluminium design with a top plate made out of aluminium itself. When you open it up the hinge rises a little to give you that extra cooling performance. By cooling I mean it really gets hot man like literally I can cook on this laptop so much so hot it gets. Unfortunately this cannot be opened with one hand that's not great. This is a 15.6 inch laptop which means this has a full size keyboard with numpad and a calculator button as well which is decently spaced and a good amount of key travel it also has backlight. Writing. Trackpad not so great. I don't think you need an explanation for this. I don't think you need an explanation for why it is not great. Just get another mouse and get your work done. On the behind panel it has a little bit of different kind of reinforcement material. For the cooling we have grills which gets really hot and it is really annoying to type on with the background rendering going on. That's everything that you need to know about the design of this monster. Let me just get on to the next one and that is the build quality of this. The whole laptop is made out of premium quality of plastic and of course it's not an aluminium finish. On the top part we, it is made out of metal. The remaining all of the laptop is pure plastic itself. The build does not feel that premium and considering the amount that you're paying it is okayish in my opinion. Talking about the keyboard flex and the screen wobbling there is a lot of screen wobbling but there is a little bit of keyboard flex as well. That's pretty annoying in my opinion. The hinges need to be calibrated since this is not a metal finish you may end up cracking your body of the laptop. That's everything that you need to know about the build quality of this. Let me just get on to the next one and that is the display of this. The key highlighting difference between the, these two models that I mentioned and the 3520 is that this laptop has an 120 hertz of refresh rate which is good in my opinion of course you are not going to game on this neither are you going to do any fast stuff on this then why 120 hertz is needed i do not understand but it will just improve your experience while browsing the web at high speed looking at the actual specs of this display for the display we have 1920 by 1080 fhd anti-glare max peak brightness hitting up to 250 nits the refresh rate of 120 hertz and there is a variable refresh rate between 60 hertz and a 120 hertz it does not get in between anything like you're looking at a static content then it switches down to the 60 hertz if you're looking at a dynamic and fast moving content it shifts to 120 hertz itself with wide viewing angles this is really a good display for all your content consuming process this is a perfect monitor for work purposes the colors are not that accurate but you can get some of your decent graphic designing work done the detailed looks are not that sharp because this is an anti-glare display itself let me just get on to the next Next one and that is performance and specification for the processor we have intel core i5 12th generation 1235u with a base clock of almost about 2 gigahertz and max pushing up to 4 gigahertz may be or may not be possible with this clock speeds including considering the battery considering the cooling performance everything will be a mess this has 10 cores and 12 threads split it in between the efficiency cores and the performance cores itself. That is really good for the power efficiency but I don't find this as so much power efficient in my daily workflow as well because it gets really hot man. I really think this is a really hot laptop. For the RAM we have 8 GB of DDR4, 3200 MHz. This can be expanded up to 16 GB with one empty slot for the upgrade. Moving on to the next one, for the graphic card we have Nvidia MX550 which is good in my opinion. This is a productivity GPU, neither can you game on it or nor you can get the heavy intensive learning tasks on this GPU as well. A mid-range GPU, this has an overall dedicated 2 GB of video memory. Okay, so you can play some games as well. And if you're wondering about the game test, I have tested the GTA 5. Stay till the end for that. Here is another GPU that is integrated with the processor itself that is Intel UHD graphics. For the storage we have Gen 3 512 GB of NVMe M.2 SSD which is really must in this modern world. 
and it can be upgraded up to 2 terabytes in case of requirement. Looking at all of these specs, you might be wondering, this is a beast of a machine and your work will be done. Actually, you are right, your work will be done, but at the same time, this is not a beast because on the battery, it is limited to a lot of power restrictions and the clock speeds come down to a very minimum of the value itself, like 1.6 I just tested it while I was shooting this video and I got a clock speed of just 1.6 GHz which is less than the base frequency itself. Taking a look at the Cinebench R20 score to just to check the performance of this. On the battery, I did get the score of 1726 which is bare minimum, which is bare minimum. Now take a look, when I connected the charger and tested it out, I got a score of 2518 which is almost seven to eight hundred points difference that is a huge difference in terms of performance itself just to get a more consistent result on the performance itself i tested the cinevench r23 score and on the battery i was able to achieve just around five thousand or so as the score but on the charger connected i got a real score of six thousand six hundred and seventy five which is insane in my opinion which is good for the price what you're giving to this laptop it is really a good laptop when you consider the price you're paying and the performance you're getting out of this please do go ahead with this laptop next and the most important thing is the gaming section of this for the game test i tested the gta 5 with high settings and a green set to 120 hertz i did really enjoy the gaming on this display itself but the laptop got so much so hot pushing it to around 60 fps i can easily cook on this laptop that's how much hot this laptop got when i was playing the game the test is on your screen please do take a look enjoy the gameplay of the gta 5 even after getting so much hot it could handle this game at high settings that is what i am appreciating so ladies and gentlemen moving on to my next topic and that is the ports on this the port selection is really very decent on the left hand side we have the charging port with a full size HDMI followed by a USB type A followed by a USB type C Thunderbolt port this is I did try to connect the external display and it works flawlessly so moving ahead on the right we have one headphone jack followed by a USB 3.0 type A and a full size HD card reader I transferred some footage from my camera to this laptop and the speeds are limited to around 40 Mbps itself my card is a 120 Mbps but the slot speed is limited to a 30 or 40 mbps please do keep that in mind when you buy this conclusion this laptop which has a lot of different arguments to be made the one sentence that i would want to address this is if you want to buy a laptop which is very much capable under your budget then get this one saying that 